Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome to this, your talking town. Uh, as the saying goes, you create the news and we will report on it, or in this case, we will discuss it. I'm here just simply to discuss the confirmation of the quartet that have left Ipswich Town today, primarily because we don't have our normal shows running in the traditional fashion. Obviously, tomorrow night we are live at 7 30. If you're watching this on Catch Up, we are live on a Friday at 7 30 with Fabian Vilness with another one of our transfer talk to specials. Not one to be missed, I absolutely promise you. Um, and, as, and of course, if you were around last summer, I know we've got lots of new subscribers and lots of new members, uh, over 110,000 new viewers on last year alone. Um, then you will maybe not be aware, but through the course of the summer, when there's transfer stuff to discuss, not necessarily the rumours, but the confirmations, then we will try our best to go live and, and get some reaction on that and some discussion on that. So uh, today we've had the message come out, the confirmation, the quartet known as uh, James Nord, Miles Kenlock, Thomas Holy and Tom Carroll uh, will be moving on from Portman Road when their contracts come to an end. Uh, so, joining me to look back on those four careers and discuss what sort of profile of player maybe McKenna will be targeting is none other than the peaky one, Mark Tuxford. How you doing, Mark? Hello, mate. You right? Very well. For those that are eagle-eyed, you're coming from a new location. Yes. Yeah, I've just moved into uh, my new gaff, so uh, it's all going very well. And um, yeah, Except the floor, I hear. Well, actually, it's now all finished, so... Um, we're at Boom. a point now where it's all complete. So, yeah. Boom. Talking of complete, obviously, the foundations at town were laid last year, but the, the work is not complete. Four players uh, confirmed that will be released. At, no was the one we've discussed to sort of at length on the podcast before. So, I, but I've not got your thoughts on that one. Uh, it's a very divided opinion. Just obviously quickly, what is your thoughts on Norwood leaving and sort of reflection on the time here from the striker? The marquee signing under, under Lambert. Yeah, I mean, I was I was quite gutted to sort of see him go. Um, I thought it was quite a, you know, a very good signing when he came into the building, first and foremost, as you say, under Lambert. Um, mm. You know, scored plenty of goals at Tranmere. Um, I plenty. would have personally given him probably another year. Uh, I know he's kind of marmite of our fan base purely because of his injury record, you know, his attitude towards the game maybe in the team itself. But I would have probably given him another year just purely based on the fact that when he plays, you know, he scores goals. Um, 12 you know, starts, a, six goals this year. Yeah. on You know, if you look at his goal per game ratio, you know, it's kind of looking at like one goal in sort of two games near enough. So, you know, those those kind of stats don't lie. And, you know, for me, I would have kept him for another year. Um, so obviously a, we're not going to be keeping him. Is what what went against him? Do you think? Do you think it was age a factor? Do you think it was profile of player? Like, what do you expect the the, the replacement for James Norwood to, to to look like next season? Um, I don't think it will be like for like. Um, I think you know the the way you want to play now under McKenna. He wants to. He, it's very fast. It's very go at it. It's very pacey. Mm. So, uh, I think you know players like Norwood and Bond. You've seen that haven't really got the game time that they wanted, uh, yeah. the run of games that they wanted. There's a lot of chopping and changing and stuff like that. And the only player that really kind of fixed that kind of uh, hole for McKenna was Jackson and obviously got himself injured. So I would have expected him to maybe start more games if he was injury free. Um, yeah. Hence why he's probably getting that new contract. So, yeah, I don't think it'll be like for like. Um, I think there'll be more pace coming into the, to the striking options um, and players that, you know, you can obviously finish and, you know, with their back to goal can, you know, score that goal, really. Well, finishing is obviously, as we've just spoken about, six goals and 12 starts is not something that James Norwood has never really struggled with here. Uh, Hox says anyone who can stay fit and not get locked out of their house will do. Is it is it also an age thing in the sense of the club want to get younger at that position? Do you feel that you're actually going to get maybe a player coming with a bit of pace, but also maybe a 24, 25? Or do you think actually... If there's a player out there who has the pace at 32, this club, despite being a player trading club, is still going to go out there and probably bring him in if, if it's the right situation. Well, it's got to be the right player for the for the team. It's got to be the right player for you know that that position. Um, you know, I've said many times that you know we should 
really be pulling away from square pegs, round holes, that type of mm. stuff, really. Um, but also, you know, when it comes to the striking options, everyone wants a 20 goal season striker and all yeah. that sort of stuff, and they're hard to come by. So, you know, it's not a case of that we're just going to go out and buy one because you know, everyone else wants one. So we're going to have to, you know, do our research, maybe look at kind of maybe the younger options. Um, and yeah, hopefully that, you know, with the style of football that we play, when it's on the ground, ball into feet, then, you know, this is the type of team that a that a player can flourish in if he's given the chance um, and given a run in the side, really. Yep. Josh Russell, one of our YouTube members, anyone that scores goals will we'll do him. Does a Johnson Clark Harris fit that profile very quickly? I'm not asking you to say whether you think he would come in or not, but as Owen says, announced JCH Johnson in the house in the no griff. Yeah, I, I rate Johnson Clark Harris. I think he was great for for Peterborough. Um, I can't remember what team he was at previously, but yeah, he's he's always scored goals at this he's kind of level. Waivers, he? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's he scored goals and he'd be the type of player that I would that I see McKenna signing. Uh, whether it would be him, I don't know. But yeah, that type of player I think would, would suit us. Absolutely. Uh, another one of the players obviously told they're no longer, uh, well, they're surplus to requirements is Tom Carroll. As Hock says, he wasn't even aware we had a Tom Carroll. This year, Mr. Carroll has started eight games out of 14. Uh, 0.8 key passes, two big chances created, zero goals, zero assists. Mm. I mean, I haven't really got to ask you if this is the right or wrong move, but in terms of someone stepping in to fill his, his shoes in the squad, again, what sort of profile do you expect that midfielder to, to, to possibly take? Uh, well, I mean... I or is he already here, in... maybe? You're, you might perhaps well, tell me Idris El Mizani is going to step in. Oh, God. Um, I mean, I, I could walk in and do Tom Carroll's job. Um, <laughs> you know, when I was playing football... At youth level and sort of like a little bit of men's football here and there. I had a ping on me. I could do that, right? But the point being is, when he played, he couldn't even string a pass together. No. The last game that I saw him play, I can't remember what, what game it was now, but uh, the second home game, I think it was. And he was very poor. Um, it, it you was. know, he, could, he couldn't string a pass li literally to the person next to him. And he just mm. kept putting out for a throw in and stuff like that. And you think that this is his main attribute. So if he can't do that, what else does he offer the team? Because in that central midfield slot, he wasn't a Morsi. He couldn't tackle. Um, he had no strength about him. And he looked a complete shadow of the player that I saw at Tottenham uh, and Swansea. Uh, and, you know, looked a, looked a good player there. So um, it's a shame for him because I, I thought he was going to be a you know fairly decent uh, squad player. I didn't think he'd start for us and, you know, set the world alight. But I did think he would be a decent squad player. Last year, we often heard that the phrase Andre needs to play, the Zeldis is, needs to play at a higher level. Harry yeah. Butcher says Carroll is so lightweight. Do you think actually Tom Carroll's sort of player who does need to play at a higher level, where he's got more time on the ball, it's less hustle and bustle, it's less Possibly. in your face? Possibly, yeah. I mean, he, his his style of football, the way he likes to play football, is more suited to a, a probably a championship or certainly a Premier League side. But at the same time, he's still not good enough, hence why he got released from you know Tottenham. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what, where his future lies for him. Um, you know, you're probably looking maybe abroad now. Um, mm -hmm. He sort of reminds me a little bit of a Jack Wilshere sort of player where he's troubled with injuries, but in there somewhere is a good player. It's Jack just Wilshere. not really for us at all. No. So. Uh, Miles Kenlock out on loan at Colchester, equally told he won't be coming back. I don't know if that's going to be surprising anybody. Mm. Uh, obviously, while at Colchester, Hasn't done that bad. League two may well be be the level. Mm. Uh, is he is he, is he a warning? Do you think tucks to some of the younger players coming through, like like an like an El, El, El Mizani? Because he has been around the first team mm. for what seems like forever and had enough opportunities to take it. Yeah, I mean, if I'm honest, I remember him coming through under I think it was McCarthy, and yeah. every season I did not rate him at all. Um, and it wasn't up until his, not last season, but the season before that, where uh, he was playing regularly, um, coming to the side, I think sort of midway through the season and started playing. And I thought, yeah, we've actually got a player in there now. Mm. Um, but then obviously Cook came in, had his own ideas and kind of shipped him out really. But it wasn't, it was that half a season in the whole time that he's been with us that I thought, yeah, he's a good player. But you can, you know, it's not consistent enough, is it? So he's got to find his way, I think. 
Um, I think this will do him the world of good by moving on to, to pastures new and, you know, getting a new club. And I expect him to probably go to somewhere like Colu and sort of go from there, really. But yeah, from what I've what I've heard, I've got obviously friends that are Colu fans and, you know, scored goals and he's been a sort of key player for him. So, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not surprised about him going. Uh, I don't really think he fits our style of play. However, you know, if we're looking at a left wing back, he might have suited that uh, as opposed to some of the players we've got mainly, but you know, we want better than that. We, we deserve that, you know, better quality player. So yeah, not surprised. Agree. I, I also think he's, he's sort of, he's, he's accurate completion rate for passes. It's probably, you know, another thing that, you know, would have ruled him out. 58% completion rate is in league two is not going to cut it in a, in a Kieran McKenna no. side. No. Does this open the door? And before I come any further, Adam says, saw a Twitter account earlier called World of Football, World of EFL. Says it said earlier, Morsi going to Boreham Wood. Yeah, I saw oh, that. It, it's definitely the summer when that happens. Uh, Hot, Kenlock, Cole, you, Norwood, Wrexham, Holy, Gillingham, Carroll, local council cleaning toilets, mm. says Hawks. Does this open the door for a Bailey Clements or is it somebody from outside the club coming in? If so, again, what's the profile? Because the big thing that the, the, uh, the club have said is profile of player. So if it isn't Bailey Clements and you're shaking your head, What's the profile of the replacement? Well, I mean, we the the players that we had brought in, you know, the likes of Penny and Coulson, they were already better than Clements anyway. Um, so we need to get that kind of player that kind of matches what we have on the other side. So, you know, it's, you can't get close to Wes Burns at the moment because mm-hmm. he's formidable. But at the same time, you need someone who's going to be able to cross a ball from a forward position but also be able to defend. And I know that's kind of like a, a fine art of being a, a modern day fullback. But, you know, you look at someone like Thompson, who was okay kind of as a defender, he was a left back. But as soon as you get him, you know, in the crossing position, you know, woeful in terms of crossing ability. And then you've mm-hmm. got someone like Penny, who isn't particularly that great at defending, but he's okay going forward. So yeah. it's, you know, it's kind of, you know, you wanted that kind of player in, in both really. But yeah, I mean, we need to be looking at players, you know, like a Luke Garber or someone like that, that had oh, that kind yeah, of both shot. of those. Um, you know, I'm I'm sure you wouldn't drop down to League One again, but, you know, it's, it's players like that that we need um, that maybe also have like a bit of a set piece skill about them. Um, so, yeah, but that's, that's a kind of ideal Paced. player that you need to, to come in and you look at like previous you know, position uh, left backs in that position before where we've been blessed with the likes of Cresswell, Mings, yeah. all of these players were good at defending, but also very good at going forward. So I know at that point we were playing left backs, but to put them in a left wing back role, they probably, probably do quite well. So yeah, that's the type of player we need anyway. In that Agreed. Position. Yeah. Pace. I like, I like, the, I like the idea of finding another Mings or another Cresswell because mm. Cressy yeah. came from a, you know, a football club that, Tramir wasn't yeah, particularly high yeah. in the pyramid. They are there. Um, well, I would you, say that we've just signed that um, Hudson, haven't we? From um, Tottenham? From, yeah. So it, players like that, you know, it's all very well giving them a contract and stuff like that, but they need the chance now. So then if, they, if they're good enough to get a, a contract, then they should be really good enough to then be knocking on the door of our first team, not the reserves, yeah. not the 23s. Give them a trial because they are going to make a difference in the first team. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, I do agree with you. You've got to, at some point, start rewarding that yeah. conveyor belt. Speaking of which, obviously, the last one we'll touch on today, Thomas Holy, a fan favourite, it has mm. to be said, out on loan at Port Vale. He won't be returning. He's played nine games, conceded nine, uh, 65% saves per game, 1.2 it works out as. Um, able-bodied backup at best. With Halaki question marks over him, are you surprised that maybe they didn't look to retain the services in case Halaki goes? Uh, not really. I mean, if if he was in McKenna's plans, he would have been number two ahead of Halaki. You yeah. know, hence why he's gone out on loan because he needs to get to game time and stuff like that. And you know, I think Holy knows that he was never going to be number one here. So no, not good enough. Yeah, and if he knows that, then. He needs to sort that, you know, make that decision himself for his own career. Um, and yeah, he's a good type of player that probably would go back to a Gillingham side and do okay, go back to Port Vale, do okay. So yeah, he's not the the right fit. And, you know, these these are players, you've got to remember, these are players that we bought under a previous regime, bargain bin. You know, yeah, we, we are looking now at better quality players. 
So I'm not really disappointed in any of these players no, being no, let no, go no. because they were of really of a previous generation. No, Carroll wasn't, but you know, players like that, they are they that's where we got them from, the bargain bin. So we actually want to be investing in a team that can take us to the next level and actually be in a playoff position or albeit, you know, a, a promotion spot. Do you bring another goalkeeper in? With or without Halaki moving on, is it dependent on Halaki and what happens? I think it's fully dependent on Halaki. I mean, from what I can see, he's going to go. Um, but, you know, we've got Nick Hayes as a yeah. you know, understudy, if you like. McKenna like young to players you bring in on a contract, you know. Yeah. So yeah. why is he not a, why is he not a fully fledged kind of third choice, I suppose? So yeah, give it to him in terms of the third choice, but you've got to be bringing in someone else. That's going to be the sort of the, the Halagki type player that wants to challenge Walton for a, a number one spot, but probably knows he's going to be that kind of number two. Um, mm. Because without seeing Hayes play, he's probably not good enough to be at the level of what Walton is or, you know, players like that. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'd be bringing in a second goalkeeper based on Halagki going. So, yeah. Uh, Josh Rosner, who will be lead to next season. Procrastinating one blast. What do you think the balance will be between loans and permanent transfers next year? Uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if it's sort of similar to what it was, you mm -hmm. know, this season where we have, you know, four or five loans. Um, because, you know, at, this, at the same time, we're trying to build a core of a team. What's your ideal Some number? Well, in terms of if loans. you could choose, yeah. Because for me, I think it's three. No more than three. Is my yeah, number. yeah. I mean, I remember Lambert coming out a few times saying that we've always had too many loan players. I know we was having mm, like five true. or six players, weren't it, at one stage. And you had to keep one sort of behind because you couldn't use him because it was against the rules and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, you don't want that situation happening ever again, really. So you've got to be looking at like, you know, three or four, to be honest with yeah. you. Um, so I think, you know, this this season we had it sort of fairly right. I mean... You know, the the we had Coulson in on loan, um, and we replaced him with a loan. So things like that are fine as long as they go back. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's I'd probably say three or four is a sort of a key number. There. Probably loans. Looks with like the two out of the three definitely possibly aren't coming back. Back uh, Backinson is the only one we've really not particularly heard much about. Just mm. quickly on the three loans, Dominic Thompson. Would you look to retain the services or? It, does he not fit that profile you were talking about earlier in terms of the ability to to, to, to deliver and the pace, etc.? Yeah, for me, he doesn't deliver in terms of the sort of player that we need. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, you know, I think from that position, we need a, a player that's going to sort of uh, channel burns on the other end. Um, so someone that's able to get back and defend, but also go ahead and, you know, attack. And if anything, Absolutely, you want them yeah. to be better in a way, to be attacking because you've got three centre backs. So we're going to play three centre backs next year. I agree. You know, you've totally. got that cover there, but totally. you need someone that's going to be a left wing back that's able to get forward. And that's their main sort of priority, really, as well as defending. Yeah. Totally agree. But when asked to defend, like Matt Penny was away at Plymouth, for example, yeah. can, can do it. It isn't yeah. something that's completely alien to him. Macaulay yeah. Bond wrote a, a passionate um, Instagram message. Mm. I would keep Macaulay Bond as a third striker. What would you do with Macaulay Bond? It looks like he's not going to be coming back as things stand. No, I, I don't think he will come back. Um, if he comes back, if he, if he comes back, I think it will be one of them that probably returns on loan as a kind of a late thought, um, mm -hmm. maybe to get the fans pumping again um, at the start of the season. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I love his passion and stuff like that. I just think he's got a massive ego. Um, okay. I yeah, think he's one before. of yeah. I think he's I think he's just one of them players that's sort of a little bit all about himself and not the team. Um, and I can't really put my finger on why I think that, but there's just certain times in the season where I've sort of seen that. Um, like a lot of the times he's having a go at refs and you know linesmen and stuff like that. When you just just get on with it, McCauley. You know you're there to make a difference, especially when you've just come on as well. You know, just go and concentrate on getting the goal. Um, and I feel like he was probably given too much responsibility in some cases under Cook because mm. of his affiliation with the fans, I suppose. But, um, yeah, um, would I be disappointed if he didn't return? Not really. Um, equally, I wouldn't mind if he came back, but I, don't, I can't see him really settling for the, the, the player that's going to be that kind of impact sub or, 
you know, what he has essentially been through the second half of the campaign this season. So I think he'll go on maybe to a sort of a League One club. I wouldn't be surprised if he went back to a, you know, maybe a Charlton or a, a Sunderland if they say in this sure. league. So, yeah. you know, teams like that, I think he would be there. I don't think he'll be doing much at QPR at all, but no. yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see him back in League One, but just he, probably not for us. He had a chance to probably do some bits and pieces with QPR, but the, the last twenty odd games has really sort of curtailed that. Yeah. I yeah. think you know because yeah. at one point he was one of the hottest strikers in the country. Big game, yeah. Bursan. Heidi would bring Selena back. Is the only person she would bring back from the loans yourself? Yeah, I mean, if I had to bring one out of the four back, it probably would be Selena, okay. um, purely because. He is able to turn the game on a sixpence, but at the same time, again, it's the consistency levels for me which concern me a little bit. Um, but when he plays, he makes things happen. Um, you just got to see, you know, some of the goals he scored, some of the passes he does, and stuff like that. And you know, whether that's whether the right person is around him, and we go back to what we were saying about Dazelle, where if he's at a higher league, does he play better? Does he play better with better players? I don't know, but you'd like to think that. Selena would be a certain starter under McKenna if he was to come back alongside yeah. Chaplin or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'd be, I'd be, I'd love to see him back. Um, I think he's a fan's favourite, and um, yeah, he's that kind of that kind of player that we need in this league. Um, so yeah, I'd be happy to see him back. But not Backinson. Uh, Backinson, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind either to be honest. Um, out of the four, I would have Selena, but at the same time, Backinson. Again, it's been a bit 50-50 for me in terms of, um, he's just had really good games and then some really woeful games. I remember him playing against Portsmouth and he was absolutely mm -hmm. dreadful in terms of passing. Couldn't pass to anyone. Uh, it was a little, bit, a little bit like Tom Carroll in that respect. But what he does offer is that combative sort of like display of, you know, he's he's like that Morsi player, but he's also able to get forward and you've seen that by some of the goals he scored and stuff like that. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see him back. Um, so yeah, but would I'll, you want to see him back? Would would, um, would would the peaky one be happy if if Backinson's in his midfield next year as a starter? Well, I, I'd like to think from what we know of Pert and McKenna that surely they've got kind of better quality options lined up in a way, but I don't know. I don't know whether maybe McKenna sees that as Backinson as a quality. Is that type of quality he needs? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but he's the one who brought him in at the end of the day. So he's obviously he obviously likes him for something. Um, Absolutely, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I I wouldn't mind seeing him back, but I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say he's our certain starter. He'd probably be more of a squad player for me. You see, that's where I'm with you. I think he's a young player with lots to develop and was on the upward curve towards the end of the year. Mm. I just wouldn't be a hundred percent okay with him being my unquestioned starter oh we're yeah. going to bring him in yeah. he'll be the starter etc it probably would be in that reserve type role so for me if that's going to be the case you have to move on a, a, an El Mizani or a, or a Harper or both yeah. otherwise you're just literally crowding the, the replacement mm -hmm. table and nobody sat around the, the starter table Do you yeah. know, you know yeah. if, you, if, you, if you get my analogy there because you can't bring in five backups with only one starter because mm. one of those backups has to be a starter. And this is just, just I'm not quite sure they're ready enough for 46 games. Um, mm. You know, so if you can't move Harper or El Miz on, for me, you can't bring Backinson back. That's where I'm at. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I wonder whether, you know, McKenna's probably going to assess the likes of El Mizzoun in Harper in pre-season. Mm. Um, and then kind of may, maybe make a late decision in terms of who he wants to bring in, maybe he wants to put one of them out on loan or even both, yeah. I don't know. But yeah, but the thing is, I don't want to get down that route where we're kind of sitting there thinking, well, okay, should we give him a chance? Should we not give him a chance at like, you know, the start of July? Because by then we should really know what our squad is and what our first team is. Because I feel like we haven't really known that. When Cook was coming in as our, as our manager last season, he didn't know what his first team was. And I get why, because we brought 19 players in. That's just ridiculous. But at the same time, McKenna's also got to bring in players. I think we kind of forget how many players we, he probably does need to bring in. Um, and I was talking to my mate Carl about this last night. Where Good old probably, Carl Brooks. Carl Brooks, yeah. And how many players? Look, I think probably about eight or nine players. Really? Yeah. Because if you're looking at getting rid of some of this dead wood, which four of them are now going, four of the loans are going, so that's eight yep. players out the door yep. already. Yeah. So 
do we you know do you replace them like for like how many starters out of those eight or nine are they are they all starters not all of them were starters no um what do you mean sorry the, the eight that have gone or the the eight that I'm thinking no no about. the eight or nine you're bringing in are they are they eight starters with burns wolfenden and walton around them or edmondson or is it seven starters how many of those eight start players you're bringing in are actual well sort of starter I, players the players that you should be bringing in for me of players that should be challenging for the first team. I, right. I, I never, I've never understood why, you know, we've ever signed players like Larson Torre, who's never ever going to be a starter for this club. I agree. Even, even in our previous regime, never going to be a starter for this club. I agree. So why were we trying to sign those sort of players? Because it essentially looks like we're just trying to pack out the under twenty threes. But then, then that's that's the stopgap for the younger players coming through. Yeah. So it never made any sense to me. Um, but yeah, the, the the seven or eight players, maybe seven to seven to nine sort of players that I'm thinking about sort of bringing in would be chomping out the bit to get in the in the first team. And if that means like you know in place of Morsi, if that means in place of Edmondson, Burns, even then mm. fine because that's what you want. You want competition for places. If you don't have that, then people rest on their laurels, don't they? Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. I'd be looking to bring in actual first team players, mm. not just sort of that, that, that maybe could compete. They're actually going to yeah. be. You know, well, that's, that's the main thing. That is the main thing. It's competition, and these players that are coming in or should be coming in should be chomping at the bit, I agree. Um, and you know, and giving players a headache, or give, certainly giving McKenna a headache in terms of selection. That's we what we have be. to get better. We absolutely, yeah. I, I agree with you. Right, uh, two comments, and then we're going to leave it there. Chris Boyd, all these players come in last time under Cook. How many of them can be adaptable enough to make an impression in a McKenna squad over a full season? Uh, Josh thinks we need three or four, and procrastinating one ball. There are two schools of thought: be Rotherham and then break the team up once promoted, or a foot or football our way up and keep most of the team that's built, or a mix of the large. Uh, with the League One proven players. That's three methods of thinking. One well, the, I take the, your point. The thing I would say about that is that, you know, this the, the squad we had this season, other than like, you know, the first core team, the likes of Morsi, Evanson, Burns, you know, some of the strikers maybe, um, you know, the back five, Walton, mm. um, you get away from that and you're kind of looking at very like bare bones of a very like fragile squad, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um and hence why there's some of them have now been released. So, you know, if they're never going to be, you know, challenging for the first team, and we know that now, and we look at players like Clements, we look at players like El Mazzuni, yes, they've come from our academy, but are they really going to be first team options for this football club? I agree. I, I found the, the three-year deal at the time bizarre. I find mm. it even more bizarre now. That I, know, I, I, know, I know a lot of people on this channel have kind of said that, you know, it's protecting an asset in terms of El Mazzuni, but he's only an asset if he's in the first team. Yeah. He's not an asset if he's in the, or push in the, the stands. First team. Yeah. But if he's not an asset in the stands, is he? Cause at the end of that three year deal, we've wasted money. He'll get released. Cause so, he's not really even threatening at this point, is he? No, not at all. No. You and know, and for me, I've always said about El Mazzuni, where is his best position? Cause I can't tell you. I don't think I don't think McKenna knows that to be fair because no. you know, last game of the season no, nobody he, knows. he played nobody right knows. wing back or the game before. So yeah, El Mazzuni doesn't know his best position. Well, at Cambridge he played that ten role, didn't he? But is but is he a number ten that can facilitate that role in this squad? Would would you put him above a Chaplin or a Selena? No, 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 no. Uh, and I tell you a second player, and it won't surprise you who 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 that second player who's who's the exact same situation as as Elm is. It's Raheem Harper. Because mm. when he was here, nobody knew where to play him. Yeah. I don't think Crew fully knew where to play him. Yeah. And I don't think when he comes back, we'll know where to play him. And yeah. again, if he's a 10, would you play him over Chaplin or Selena? No. Would you play him over Sam Morsi or Lee Evans? No. So, no. yeah, you've got two players in a very similar situation there, haven't you? Mm. That nobody truly knows, probably themselves. Uh, but that, that but was some of our think? recruitment last year, though. I felt it felt like it fell down a little bit. It's, but we all know like what happened with the number ten situation, where we had bloody four number tens yeah. for one position, and then you're looking at the kind of like the central midfield options as well, where we didn't have enough what, real quality in there because you mm. saw that when Morsi got injured, you saw that when Evans was playing and then injured. I think we, you know, for me, I was one of Evans' biggest critics when he was playing. But then you Likewise. kind of realised what kind of job he was doing. Um, in terms of getting the ball forward and all that sort of stuff, which is, you know, underestimated. But yeah, you, you look past them too, and even now the quality's not there now, is it? Or the backup's no. not there? So, yeah, 
There we go. Right, we're done. We said no more than half an hour. We've been 30 minutes on, on the dot. Uh, the first transfer talk is done. It's in the books. It's a departure. Not yet quite an arrival. We'll hopefully go live soon with news of, of arrivals. You can support the platform through becoming a YouTube member or through Ko-Fi. Links are in the chat and the description. But the peaky one, Mark Tuxford, thank you for joining me last minute to discuss the, the four departures. Um, we'll, we'll, as I say, we'll do this through the summer. Talking Town, the fan platform, delivering the news and the views of the Lipsy Town fans. But for now, are you off to watch the semi-final? Uh, I'm not actually, no. I've got to do some oh. work. So, um, Oh, you've got to do some work. Look at this, gentlemen and gentlemen. Well, enjoy your work and we'll speak very soon. Good evening. Ipswich Buses, guys. your local bus company serving your football team. Buses run every 10 minutes. Avoid the traffic. Don't get stuck in the delay. Get Ipswich Buses today. Ipswich Buses.